welcome back to another video. This weekend I am exploring the Victorian high country which is beautiful. Every spot I go to is beautiful but there is so much to see in this area and I know I'm not going to get to all of it but I will do my best. I will try to get to as many cool spots as possible and um, yeah one of the reasons I came out here this weekend is because this area is subject to seasonal closures but it is officially open and a really cool app that I use called Beyonder they essentially give you locations to like really cool hidden spots give you all the directions on how to get there. I've been using that app pretty much my entire trip so if you've been wondering how I find a lot of my cool spots that is the app anyway so they are hosting an event this weekend where it's like a little bit of a competition to visit as many locations as you can obviously the idea is to really pick up garbage along the way so that you know we can obviously leave places better than where we showed up which is always what you should be doing when you are camping and exploring but yeah so I thought I'd come out here see if I can tick off some of the locations who knows maybe I could be in a bit of a running to win some prizes but yeah it's just a really good excuse to get out here and um yeah first spot is the clear spot lookout which i'm at now and to get here was a little bit of a terrifying process because i fucked up literally that's just as simple as it is so when I was living in Brisbane, a good friend of mine, we always had this running joke that I would always use Google Maps, like I would rely on it, even just to get from Brisbane to the Gold Coast. Like I didn't need Google Maps, but I would just put it on anyway. So it's a little bit of a problem that I have. And to get here today, there's three ways that you can come here. So most two, like two-wheel drives can get up here. It's a little bit of like a, you know, sheer cliffs, a bit of rocky, but nothing crazy. Otherwise there is four-wheel drive tracks and there's also walking tracks. So I obviously wanted to opt for the two-wheel drive track, just being that I am by myself. And Google Maps told me to go up, like there's a lot of different roads, like it's not like it's super clear, but Google Maps told me to take this hill. And from the bottom, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. Like this must be the track. So I start driving up it and <laughs> I should have just turned around. Like it started to get really sketchy. Like I had everything, you know, done right. I was in low range, I did all the things, but I just didn't have the traction. And I was at this really like sketchy spot and my car started to slide. Oh, anyway, just I don't like it was gross. Like I just I feel like I could have died because it was just not the kind of position you will ever want to be in, especially by yourself as well. So moral of the story, a little bit of a panic attack later, I did manage to get out of it. Like I don't even like, you know, doing a U-turn in positions like that, but I managed to maneuver out so that I could come back down. Uh, and then I found the two-wheel drive track, which is where I'm at now. So long story short, hopefully the rest of the day is a bit more smooth sailing that. But let me get the drone up because this spot is absolutely stunning. And then today I plan on taking off a heap of spots. So make sure you stay tuned because there are some beautiful lookouts, huts, waterfalls, all the things. And of course, I will be picking up as much garbage along the way as I can. So let's get into it. definitely beautiful and well worth getting up here just given that I went the right way so I'm gonna head back down now the first spot I'm heading to is called the horn and it is this beautiful like little hut right over like the mountain so I'm pretty excited to go check out that one and then we will be tackling all the other spots today there's too many to name right now so you guys will just have to follow along and see Now to give you guys a little bit of a comparison as to like the track that I'm on to the two wheel drive track opposed to the four wheel drive track and it's not that one. It's actually this one over in the back there. So look, I still don't think it looks that bad but little Jim shouldn't have been going up their stock, okay? Or with anyone else to help. So I actually got a decent amount of the way up but yeah, as I said, I was just slipping so not worth it at all. <laughs>
Now this is where things got a little bit tricky, but as always, when you do reflect back on things, they never seem as bad as what they felt in the moment. Credits to my GoPro for stabilizing this footage as much as it has, but I can assure that there were points where my car was not in a stable position and even with my brace on, I was definitely slipping. So definitely a good excuse to turn around. turning a little bit pink but it is so beautiful you can actually walk up to the summit which is about a 45 minute walk so i'm going to jump into that now and hopefully it gets a little bit warmer once i start hiking are just going to be absolutely magical this whole weekend so this is the Mount Buffalo Skywalk and it is so high up but it's so nice and then I'm gonna go check out Mount Buffalo Lookout now. So now that I have done the Mount Buffalo lookout, I was actually going to head to the Crystal Brook Falls. Now I put this in my map as a 22 minute drive. Turns out that it is like 500 meters from the car park of Mount Buffalo lookout. So I don't know how I missed that one when I was planning, but that just means I've got more time in my day. So let's go check out this waterfall and then see what we've got on the list next.
Alright guys, so I'm at my next stop, which is the Rollinson's Falls track. So this one here is about three kilometers total. So another nice little short uh, little hike to the waterfall. And then I have still got four more spots that I want to get to today. I'm not sure if I can get all of them in, but we'll see what we can do. And then I will be finishing up at the Pretty Valley Hut camping spot, which I'm so excited. I heard such good reviews about it. So let's get to this hike and then we'll move on to the next one and see if we can cram everything in. So there are actually two sections to this waterfall. There is the lower falls and then the upper falls. So I thought I'd check out the lower falls first. It is so nice. I do have my swimmers on. I'm not sure if I'm gonna jump in because it's so cold. Like I wish it was really hot. Like the sun isn't really giving too much warmth, but let me show you guys this spot because it is stunning. definitely cold but we got through it so I'm gonna hike back up to the upper pools now I'm sure I will warm up in that time whether or not I go for another swim we'll see so let's get to it You would think after jumping into what I would consider as like an ice bath would rejuvenate me, but I'm actually feeling really tired. So I have decided to bypass the Lady Bath Falls, which is sad because I know it is stunning, but I'm running out of daylight and it does look like it's going to rain. So I've driven straight out to my next stop, which was the Fainter Falls. So it's about an hour outside of Bright. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to have some lunch and then I'm going to do a little hike up to the waterfall. And then I'm going to head to my very last spot, which is the Pretty Valley Rock Pools. And then as I've mentioned, I'm camping in the area. So that should hopefully get me there and set up in time before it gets dark. Good thing about daylight savings. I've got plenty of time. Um, but yeah, let's get some coffee and have some food. And hopefully that just like gives me like a burst of energy. But let's get to it. <music>
Hey guys, it is obvious that Victoria has missed the memo that it is no longer winter. So on my way to the Pretty Belly Rock Pool, I pass through Falls Creek, which is actually a popular ski resort within the winter months. Although I wasn't expecting to see snow so late in the season, it was pretty cool to come across. And this whole area is absolutely beautiful. So I had to get the drone up so I could show you guys. All right, so I just got to the Pretty Belly Creek Pool and I have no idea how to get down. On top of that, it is so windy and it is freezing. I was thinking I'd get here and go for a swim, but with the weather taking a bit of a turn and just the fact that I'm pretty sure it's like five degrees right now, there's no way in hell I'm getting in that water. So I might throw the drone up. It is a little bit windy, but I feel like it'll be okay. And I'll suss out if I can get down there. If not, I'll just get some cool shots with the drone. set up at my campsite i've got the fire going and watching the sunset it is freezing i'm really hoping i get through the night okay but i've got plenty of blankets so hopefully that will keep me warm but in saying that this spot is absolutely stunning it is actually a free campsite as well which is always a win and it is the pretty valley hut campsite so if you're ever in the area definitely come and check this one out but i will be probably having a bit of an early night anyway i've had a huge day i'm feeling pretty tired and then tomorrow i don't have as many places to go and see so to speak but everything I want to go see is a pretty fair hike to get there so I'm heading out to see the Paradise Falls and then I'm heading over to Mount Buller for Craig's Hut if you don't know what that is I will definitely fill you guys in on a little bit more tomorrow but until then let me show you this sunset and I'll see you guys all in the morning <music> Good morning everyone. So I got up nice and early this morning. It was about a three hour drive to get from Pretty Belly over to Chestnut, which is where Paradise Falls is. Luckily the hike is only like 500 meters down. So we're gonna get to this and I'll show you guys the falls. Alright guys, so I just got out to the telephone box junction, which is the entryway to get to Craig's Hut, and it is closed. So I probably should have done a bit better research before coming out here because I had no idea it was closed. I just assumed everything in this area opened up around the same time, but I think this spot actually may open up 
closer towards the back end of November potentially so it's unlikely I'll have time to get back out here before then which is such a shame because Craigside has got such cool like history behind it so it's one of those things I will have to potentially come back another time and get it done. You can still hike from this location but if I've read correctly online I think it's like four to five hours which I'm neither physically or mentally prepared to do today so I think I'm just going to wrap up the video here. I've definitely had my ups and downs for this weekend but overall it's been such a cool weekend and I got to see some pretty cool spots so thank you again for watching and I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you.